This is not a video to learn how to rock climb. If you want to learn to climb, hire a certified climbing guide. This video is intended for physics students to learn about some of the aspects of physics that occur in the sport of rock climbing. Watch as two physics teachers spend a day climbing in the gunks. All right, Madonna, you ready to try some rock climbing? Absolutely ready, Frack. All right, put on your backpack, we'll get going. Wow, this weighs a ton. Yeah, well, weight, what is the formula for weight? Oh, it's, um, fuga muga, SG equals MG. MG. Cool. Wait, 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 wait. What? I'm, I'm already tired. Tired? We've got a lot more work to do than this. Work, Scott. Hey, you're right. Work. I'm going up, and I'm pushing myself up. Work. Four times distance. Wow, I'm not going to have to go to the gym. I'm burning up a lot of jewels of work. Man, you just got up there so quickly. How'd you do it? Hey, I guess I'm just more powerful in watts. At the base of the cliff, they get ready to climb. All right, you're going to need these special rock climbing shoes. Try them on. What's wrong with my, my regular shoes? Well, the bottom of your regular shoe has a different type of rubber on the bottom of it. The rubber on the bottom of those, it's more sticky, I guess. Oh, so what you're saying is the coefficient of friction is higher for this rock climbing shoe than my regular shoe? Exactly. This has a higher mu value than this rubber. So that's going to stick and give you more friction than a sneaker. Well then, I'm putting these on. The rubber has a high coefficient of friction, which enables you to stick to the rock better. Climbing chalk does the same thing. It increases the coefficient of friction by drying out your hands. Once climbing, the rope system is used to keep the person safe when they fall. There's a weight downwards represented by the red arrow, the rope exerting a force upward, the blue arrow, and the rock is exerting a small force out, the green arrow. This is called static equilibrium. There's no net force. This is achieved by using a belay device, which uses the force of the hand and friction to provide a force downward, the red arrow, to counteract the upward force that the climber is exerting on the rope. That's the blue arrow. The climbers use a guidebook, which tells route description, the difficulty, and a map which shows which way to go, called a topo. The first climber to head up is called the lead climber, and the rope is tied to them, and they use a variety of equipment, including quick draws and slings and carabiners, with devices that can be fixed into the rock and the rope can be clipped to it. These are called nuts, wedges of metal that fit into the cracks, and camming devices, which are spring-loaded and change their size to fit into the crack. The lead climber begins climbing, belayed by the second or follower. That other person is in charge of controlling the rope. But until the lead climber secures a piece of gear into a crack, they are in the danger of falling to the ground. The more pieces of gear that are put into the cliff, the safer the climb is. Here the climber is heading up towards a crack where he will then insert a piece of gear and clip the rope to it like this. The lead climber selects a piece of gear that is the right size for the crack and then they fit the piece of gear in such a way that the direction of the force on the gear will be able to support the direction of the fall. They then take the rope and clip it in to a sling. The second person to climb is called the follower, or second, and as they move upwards they take the gear back out of the crack and they collect it so that they can give it back to the lead climber when they reach the ledge or the belay.
put this stuff to my right side. <laughs> now the second needs to anchor to the belay. The belay has already been constructed by the lead climber previously, and it's done in this fashion. Pieces of gear are placed in the cracks, and carabiners, which are clips, are connected to the gear, and then a sling is used to connect the carabiners to a one single anchor point. The sling is positioned this way so that it's free to move through the carabiners and adjust so that the length can change and the force can be distributed evenly between the two pieces of equipment. The red arrows represent the force the gear placed in the crack can support. The vector sum of these two forces is equal to the maximum force the anchor system can support, represented by the green arrow. The smaller the angle between the two arrows, the greater the weight the anchor system can support. This diagram shows different angles in which two anchor points, represented by the X's, um, can be connected. All right, let's look at the anchor system here. It looks a little complicated, but essentially we got a piece of gear up there, and we've got that equalized down here to a locking carabiner where we're clipped in. Now, I'm just curious, how much weight can these... Um these carabiners, equalizers, and doodads support? Well, let's see. This one right here says um, 8 kilonewtons. So that's uh, 8,000 newtons. Kilos, 1,000. So 8,000 newtons. So what you're saying is an elephant could rock climb with these? Probably. Hmm. At least a, a small elephant. All right. Wow. <laughs> weight is a force. And the metric unit for weight is the newton. The British unit for force is the pound. The carabiner the climbers are connected to is 8 kilonewtons. That's 8,000 newtons. Since 1 newton is equal to 0.225 pounds, the carabiner can support about 1,800 pounds. <laughs> 